tune in for Patrick Ching's Painting in Paradise. Aloha, I'm Patrick Chang, and thank you for joining me on Painting in Paradise. In this episode, we learn about Kahuli, Hawaii's unique and precious land snails. We'll find out why some of them are known as the singing snails. Huh? Snails can sing? Well, maybe. I'll explain later in the show. We'll hear from Dr. David Sisko of the Hawaii State DLNR and Dr. Noreen Young, the malacology curator at the Bishop Museum about the work they do with Hawaii's endangered snails. I'll show you how to draw a Hawaiian snail and then how to paint the beautiful little creatures. All this and more on a colorfully crawly episode of Painting in Paradise! Honuen Hina is a children's book that was painted with aloha by many artists of all ages. This story of coexistence answers some questions about the history of these animals, but more importantly, about their future. Available online at patrickchingart.com. Hawaii has had many species of native land snails, most of which have already become extinct. Many more are endangered of becoming extinct. Some of the reasons they're endangered are the loss of habitat and predation by introduced animals like Jackson's chameleons, rats, and the cannibalistic Florida snail. The Florida snail was originally brought to Hawaii to kill the introduced African snail, but it went way above and beyond that call and has eaten many of Hawaii's land snails as well. Just a reminder, wash your hands well if you run into these introduced snails or slugs as they are known to carry the rat lungworm disease. Hawaii's native snail shells were highly coveted and used to adorn artifacts and make lei in early times. In later years, people gathered large collections of the beautiful shells, and that contributed significantly to their decline. The general name for land snails is kahuli, but many of them are also known as pupu kane oi, which means the shell that sounds long. This name was bestowed upon them because it was believed that the snails could sing. The snails are active at night, and most people now believe that the singing sounds attributed to them were more from the surrounding crickets or perhaps from the wind whistling across their shells. Other names for the snails include Kanekua Mauna, or singing on the mountain ridges, and Pololei, which means correct or perfect. There are also many other species of Hawaiian snails that are smaller and shaped differently than the Akatanella snails, and most of them are endangered of becoming extinct. On a positive note, there's good work being done to protect our native snails and we're even finding new species of snails that have never been described until recently. Now we'll hear from Dr. David Sisko and Dr. Noreen Young, whose important work helps to preserve our rare and endangered snails. Hi everybody, my name is Dave Sisko and I coordinate the Snail Extinction Prevention Program for the Department of Land and Natural Resources. And hi, my name is Nori and I am at the Bishop Museum and I am the Melacology Curator. So today we're gonna to talk a little bit about Hawaii's land snails. So Hawaii is a diversity hotspot with at least 754 species. Over 99% of these snails occur in Hawaii and nowhere else in the world. Most people are familiar with our large colorful tree snails in the genus Acatonella. These snails have really peculiar life history. They can live for close to 20 years. They take up to five years to reach maturity. And once they are mature, they give live birth to only one to five offspring per year. So they really long lived and really slow reproductive rate. The vast majority of the snail found on the islands um, includes other tree snails, as well as ones found on the ground. They range in size from about two millimeters, which is, which is like the size of a rice grain, to over seven centimeters. The snails on plants feed on algae and fungus, and the ones found in the leaves, the twigs, and the bark on the ground feed on the dead and decaying leaf litter. 
In Hawaii, snails can be found from the forest floor all the way up to the highest parts of the canopy and from the coastal strands to some of the highest mountains. They are important components for forest ecosystems, increasing nutrient cycling. They also clean our plants from the algae and the fungus to help photosynthesize the plants. And they are said to be a canary in a coal mine. So a lot of these snails, once they get to an area, they're not able to move around very easily or fly away like an insect or even a bird. And so usually if they start going extinct, something's happening to that ecosystem that we should probably be paying attention to. Unfortunately, centuries of habitat altercations, historical overcollection, climate change, as well as appetites of invasive predators, such as rats and chameleons and this rosy wolf snail from Florida. So in combination, um, all of these factors has caused a rapid range reductions as well as extinctions of some of these species. And so there are estimates of imminent extinction of over 100 additional land snow species in the next 10 years, unless we do something. As this crisis accelerates, one emergent partnership is building on over a century of study, bringing more stakeholders than ever before. And this includes the Department of Land and Natural Resources and the Bishop Museum and a variety of, of stakeholders across the state. So now I'm gonna brag a little bit about the Bishop Museum. So since 2011, Drs. Ken Hayes and Noreen Young with the Bishop Museum and other local, national, and international colleagues have organized and conducted the most comprehensive Hawaiian land snail surveys within the last six years. They've surveyed more than a thousand sites, assessed sites across all islands, and they have rediscovered over 200 species of native Hawaiian land snails, some of which were thought to be extinct. And several of these species are even new to science. Using data from these biodiversity surveys and the extensive reference collection at the Bishop Museum, they are compiling historical and currently known species distributions, assessing species relationships and population assessments, and uh, solving taxonomic uncertainty for many groups and developing illustrated guides to aid in conservation management actions and, and policies across the state. And I get to brag a little bit about Dave. So since its founding, the Department of Land and Natural Resources, the Snail Extinction Prevention Program that Dave leads the charge for, has built a captive rearing program that now harbors more than 40 critically imperiled snail species from five islands, and many of which are now extinct in the wild. Additionally, the program has grown to include a small field crew of technicians, interns, and student assistants, and they work tirelessly across multiple islands to survey for undiscovered populations, reintroducing species from captivity, as well as the ones from the Bishop Museum, and to provide predator control and exclusion when possible. Through collaborations, the program now coordinates efforts with a diverse array of partners, including state, federal, academic, zoological, and private conservation entities and landowners to save our remaining native Hawaiian land snails. If you'd like to learn more about the Bishop Museum's efforts or the Department of Land and Natural Resources efforts to save snails, you can visit the websites listed here. And uh, thanks for listening. Thank you. When we return, I'll show you how to draw the singing tree snail. All right, friends, so now I'm going to show you how I go about drawing the singing tree snail, the pupu kane oi. Okay? You ready? Everybody ready? 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 Everybody ready? Now, just because it's a snail, don't mean you got to go slow. But in the beginning, we are going to press softly. How are we going to press? Softly. softly. That's right. We're going to press softly so we don't dig into that paper. And if we got to erase or adjust lines, they're easy to do. The first thing I'm going to do is put a big circle over there. And that's going to be the main part of the um, snail's shell, okay? So just get your pencil. I'll get a pen so you can see. And let's put a circle right in the middle of the page. Just about that big. Now, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to make progressively smaller, like uh, crescent shapes, kind of like little moons. OK, watch this. Here, we'll make one, two, getting smaller and smaller, even smaller. But wait, there's more, yes. We're going to give it a little bit of what we call a lip, okay? And that just goes like that. And what do we need next? We need the actual snail, yeah. There's a snail lives in that shell, most of the time anyway. And 
for the snail, we're going to make him coming out here and we're going to make a little stalk for his eye and a little circle at the end for his eye. And then come down and let's give him another eye. Okay, a stalk and an eye. Come down again and you know they have another little protrusion right there. It's called an, uh, a uh, the kind. I don't know what it's really called, but they're called tentacles. It goes right around there. I don't know if they're like antenna or what. I'm gonna look it up. You can look it up. You probably look it up before I look it up. Okay. Now for the snail's body, I'm just gonna make like that and a little bit of a end part and it comes and connects right up to the shell. Yeah. So we got our snail's shell, he got his eyes and his little pokey things sticking out, whatever they're called. And uh, let's put him on top of a leaf, okay? Oh yeah, what is he doing? I don't know. I'll make a leaf going like behind the snail and... And this will kind of make it like the leaf's going behind the snail. And you see that? And right here is like a midrib. Um, I'm going to put a little, I'll call it a leaf stalk there. And we can radiate some, um, oh, what do you call these lines? Like veins of the leaf, okay? Yeah. Now you get it? Yeah. There's going to be veins of the leaf on that side. I'm going to put a little bit of a plant stalk that kind of like a trunk or a tree trunk, you know? And on that trunk, I like to put like little, um, oh, squiggle marks, you know, for the wood grain. Maybe even a knot over there. They're kind of fun. So I'm going to put some reflections like on the shell. And here, you see it's kind of like a half moon shape. And each one of these sections will have a little shell, like a half moon shape here. And that's all I'm going to do for the form up stage of my snail. Alright, so now that I've got my snail and its shell and the leaf and the tree formed up, I'm going to go with a little heavier pen, so you can use a pen at home now or you can press harder with your pen. So I'll use a little bigger pen, okay? And I'm gonna take this first shape and I'm gonna include the lip on it. Here's what I'm gonna do. You can wash this and then go do it, okay? So my pen goes around the lip, kind of connects it to that circle. And connects it. Next, I'm gonna continue with the crescent shape. And remember, when we make these crescent shapes, smaller and smaller. I kind of want them to form like a little point or a cone, yeah? So here, just little crescent shapes. Another one smaller. And finally another one. Then I'll continue to trace over my lines with a darker pen. Can you use sound effects too? I like to use sound effects. And now it's kind of a fun part. Um, I'm gonna put in those reflections, okay? And they're just like a crescent moon shape. Every section has one. And it just kind of gives the wet sparkle effect. Now that I've done that, I'll do some on the eyes, you know, the maca. If you wanna give a hint of which eye is in front of the other, then I guess first you gotta know which eye is in front of the other. I'm gonna. I'm going to give a little bit of a line right there telling the viewer that, oh, that eye is just a little bit in front of the other one. You know, little overlapping lines, they, they tell the viewer stuff. Now from here, I'm going to start to give the shell some designs because these shells are beautiful and colorful. They're so fun to color. Let's make the lines in the direction of our initial circle. And... Okay. Notice that I did not go inside of the white because that's going to stay white. Okay. And just keeping them in the same direction as our circle and our crescents. Okay. All right. Yeah, 
it gets pretty fun in here. Because you can imagine how fun it's going to be to color this with all these different colored stripes. Now another thing we can do, I'm going to get my smaller pen. You can get your pencil or, or just press a little softly and light here. And we can make some even directional lines, these shelves that grow in a certain way. And they got some lines coming like this in the contours of that circle we did. Triangle like that. Okay. Remember, nothing goes inside of those little glisten areas, but I'm just kind of going in the direction or the contour of the shell. As it gets towards the middle, the lines can start to go the other way, other direction. So basically, they're going to curve in the other direction, yeah? And you're telling your viewers how the shell is curved and shaped. And we can go do this to the next section too. Kind of fun. As it gets towards the middle here, the lines are going to go in the other directional contour, okay? So this is delicate, but it's helpful in times when you want to get into those real details of how the snail's shell grows. Now also on top of the snail itself, you can have some fun. Uh, you can be putting in, uh, you know, you can put in more glisten marks. Also, I like to put a little bit of these circles inside of the snail's body. They're pretty fun, you know? And when it comes time to color them, whether they have lines or not, or circles or not, you can just have a good old time coloring them. Now, the last thing you can do for this drawing is to create things in the background and these things can be like maybe clouds or mountains, you know. I'm gonna go put some clouds over here. You know, I might even put little birds or whatever. And these just give me more places to color, yeah? And I think I'll give a little bit of a hint of a mountain over there. Tells us that the snail is kind of high on a tree overlooking the clouds and things. And there you have it, the singing tree snail called the Pupu Kaneoi. When we return, I'll show you how to paint the Hawaiian tree snail. If I were a painter, I would paint my reverie. If that's the only way for you to be with me. We'd be there together, just like we used to be. Underneath the swelling skies for all to see. And I'm dreaming of a place where I could see your face. And I think my brush would take me. Now that I got my drawing done, I'm going to paint this up, but I'm going to do it in a watercolor style, so I'll put it flat on a table. The first thing I'm going to do is cover the entire sky with clean water. That way, when I paint the sky, the gravity of the water will carry the paint down and it'll stay out of the parts that I don't want painted. Next, I'll mix up a light blue sky with white and a little bit of phthalo blue. For the upper sky, I'm going to use a combination of white with a little more phthalo blue and maybe even a little bit of violet. Next, I'll mix up some colors for my tree bark. This is usually going to be some browns, maybe a little bit of orangish and yellow, whatever colors you want to paint your tree with. If you've done your drawing using a waterproof pen like a Sharpie, then the lines will stay there and you can paint over them and still see them. Next I'll put in my mountains, just using some lighter greens and some darker greens to show where the shadows go. When I start painting the leaf, I'm going to start with the lightest green first and then gradually get darker and darker greens. Then I'll add my greens that can get progressively darker and darker. 
In this painting, I'm going to get the edge of the leaf a little darker than the center of it. That'll give the effect that the leaf is curved and give it some form. A nice place to make it even darker is right underneath the snail. That will set the color of the snail off against the color of the leaf. For the cloud shadow color, I'm going to get a little bit of a bluish purplish gray. For the body of the snail, I'm going to use a little bit of a gold brown, kind of a yellow mustardy color. I'm also going to add some darks to it, maybe around up by the eyes. I'm going to try and remember to keep the white spots white, giving it a wet effect like there's some glistening going on. I'm going to make the snail's body the darkest right beneath the shell. That's going to give the shell a beautiful place to sit. And now comes the fun part, painting the shell. First I'll start to add some shadow to the shell by painting the parts where the sun doesn't hit it a little grayish blue. Now you can choose the colors you want to paint your snail. You can go and make it realistic if you got photographs of snails and you want to duplicate them. Or just go ahead and make up your own colors for your snail. It's fun! And finally, add your finishing touches. Just put things where you think they'll look nice. The main thing about this is have a good time doing it and it'll show. Thank you for joining me on Painting in Paradise. I hope you enjoyed learning about Hawaii's unique and precious land snails. I'd love to see what you did, so why don't you send your art to aloha at patrickching.com? <laughs> Bye-bye.